Video 7 Cloud Advantages Scaling and Redundancy In this video, we will first talk about scaling as an advantage of the cloud and some companies who have used the cloud to successfully scale and those that fail to scale. Later, we will talk about redundancy as an advantage of the cloud. Examples of Cloud Advantage Netflix.com Netflix started as a company which delivered movie DVDs by post. They got very popular and started streaming movies online. Today, Netflix and YouTube together account for more than half of North America's internet traffic. In the month of June 2013 alone, it streamed 1 billion hours of video. They have a total of 40 million customers. This means that they have more subscribers than top cable giants like HBO. Initially, they were on physical hardware, but they used the cloud to scale. In 2006-2007, when they started streaming and they were doing so through their own data centers, they found that their hardware couldn't deal with the huge load that they were encountering and had frequent failures. Also, they realized that they could not build data centers fast enough to support their growing user base. They decided to offload their data center infrastructure requirements to Amazon Web Services. They now employ Amazon Web Services for a wide number of purposes including encoding movies for streaming, log analysis and their production website. They periodically analyze terabytes of logs for debugging, monitoring, business intelligence, reporting, etc. Zynga.com Zynga is a social game company. The company has made games for MySpace and then Facebook. It started in 2007 and it was once a 6.6 billion US dollar company. Zynga has over 250 million monthly active users globally. It owns 7 of top 10 games on Facebook.com. Its popular titles include Farm Mill, Mafia Wars and Zynga Poker. Next, I want to spend some time investigating few of the games that Zynga released. The chart shows the daily average users after the launch of 10 popular Zynga games. The time scale is relative. Of course, not all Zynga products were launched on the same day, but what we are trying to figure out is what was the traffic pattern for the games over a period of time after release. First, let us check out Zynga's most popular game, which was most successful. The light blue line denotes Farmville. We see that from six months after the launch, Farmville had close to 30 million active daily users and because this is a hosted game there are 30 million users playing games on Zynga servers. Can you imagine the infrastructure needed for that kind of game? An infrastructure to support 30 million people playing games and to add to that scaling up in a period of six months is actually very hard almost impossible with traditional IT infrastructure. This is impressive, but that's not the only point. Consider what happened after 9 months. Let's say, for the first 9 months, you were able to add servers as the traffic was growing. You were somehow able to set up thousands of servers to support the traffic and your customers were happy. What happened when the user request dies down? When traffic goes down, the infrastructure that costed you a huge amount of money just lies there without providing any return and most likely the company will go bankrupt. Another point, Cityville was launched after Farmville and let's say you were the manager estimating the number of users for Cityville your infrastructure should support. So you would possibly think as many users as Farmville, right? since people who like Farmville would like Cityville as well. But here's what happened. Initially, Cityville hit about 2 million users in 2 months. 
but then it died down rapidly. This reiterates our previous statement that it is very hard to estimate user traffic for hosted applications. There were other older games for Zynga like Yoel etc which didn't do so well. Farmville was the first game at Zynga that did phenomenally well. It is very hard to predict the success or failure of an application and you have to be ready for both. As said by Mark Williams, the company's VP of Network Operations, given the game's huge growth without Amazon, Farmville would have failed. And if Farmville would have failed, Zynga would not have been able to be a multi-billion dollar company. Failed to scale. There are also examples of companies who have failed to scale. Friendster. Have you heard about Friendster? Friendster was the very first social networking application that got popular. This was even before Facebook, MySpace or Orkut. It was THE social networking platform. It spread like a wildfire on launch. Within months, everybody knew about Friendster, especially in American college campuses and it had 3 million users within the first few months. Imagine having 3 million users within the first few months of the launch of a product. But the problem was that as people started getting onto Friendster, it became slower and slower. They didn't have any kind of control on who could sign up. It took minutes to log into the site and even more time to send messages. Because of the slowness of the site, it gave opportunity to sites like Facebook and MySpace to launch and people easily moved to these sites. Facebook kept growing and were able to sustain the user base. Ex-CEO Friendster says, We didn't solve the first basic problem. Our site didn't work. And an interesting quote by a Facebook executive, All they had to do, which in case they're referring to uh, Friendster, All they had to do was keep the damn server up and running. This is because once people get accustomed to a product, it is very hard for them to change. Let's say a new social networking platform comes out and it's much better compared to Facebook, feature-wise. People won't move easily. Why? Because they already have Facebook. They want to use what they are used to. Imagine Friendster had their services up and running. If they were able to scale and had enough infrastructure, to keep things right, they would have been the Facebook, the multi-billion dollar company that Facebook is right now. Even maybe Facebook could not have been so successful if Friendster were able to scale. So it's very interesting to think that the very reason that this company failed is infrastructure. When you launch a product for a company, you have to prepare for failure or success. The next company is Cool. It's pronounced Cool but it's spelled C-U-I-L. This story was back in the day when there was this fierce search competition between Google and Yahoo. This was over what is called a search index. A search index is how many billion pages have been crawled by a search engine and indexed in the search results. The competition was swaying back and forth between Google and Yahoo. Google saying they had bigger search index on some days and Yahoo claiming they were leading on the others. At the time, three ex-Google employees started this company called Cool and announced the launch of their own search engine and their shot to fame was their index was three times the size of Google. People started calling it the next Google or the Google killer search engine. There was a real buzz about it in the IT world. At the same time, Google stocks were doing really well. Wall Street heard about this and started writing about this. Slowly, this spread all over the media, so even non-IT people got to know about this and were waiting for the launch. So Cool might have anticipated a decent traffic from the tech community, but as they launched, there were so many people trying to access the site at the same time that the servers crashed. The error message due to excessive load our servers didn't return result please try your search again 
which were displayed when accessing the site was a huge embarrassment. Moreover, there was what the company called a serious file corruption due to overloading. Their entire index got corrupted and people started getting inappropriate results along with their search results. Within a day, they went from being the most anticipated product to a big failure and they did not get a second chance. So, scaling is important and if you don't plan for that, you will fail. Animoto. There is this product called Animoto. It's a very simple product. It takes photographs and soundtracks and merges them together to create a video. This video will be like a slideshow with music. They also do some interesting things like when the music is slow, the pictures move slowly across the screen and when the music is fast, the pictures move fast as well. So for hosting an application like this, what do you need in the IT infrastructure? One, you need a lot of CPU because conversion of photo and music to video is a CPU intensive task and you need good bandwidth because the storage for video is larger than compared to photos and people will start sharing with their friends and family and they would start watching the videos as well and this would be streamed from your own servers. As you grow, you will need more CPU. You will also need to make sure you have enough bandwidth. As long as the bandwidth and CPU are good, your customers are happy. But if any one of them is bottlenecked, your customers get bad experience. If the video download is buffered, then there is bad user experience. And if you don't have enough CPU, the conversion takes a long time. So Animoto went ahead and launched the application. But when they realized that though they had a good application, it was not very popular. They realized that it was a lot of work for someone to use the application. People had to manually upload the pictures and then upload the music and they had to share the link via email. They thought to themselves, where is one place where people store their photos and is easy to share? And the answer was Facebook. They launched a Facebook application where you can select one of your albums, select from a list of songs or upload your own song and they combine to give you the video which you could share easily on Facebook. This app went viral. Within five days, they went from five servers to 5,000 servers. Can you do that on physical hardware? Even if you had unlimited money, unlimited manpower, this kind of scaling is almost impossible and you need cloud to do this. Nothing matches cloud in terms of scaling. Cloud advantage, redundancy. Another advantage you get in cloud is redundancy in infrastructure. So we already talked about the fact that cloud providers have data centers in multiple geographic locations. This is a map of where Amazon Web Services has their infrastructure. Amazon has infrastructure in US, Brazil, Europe, Japan, Australia and China. Let's take the example of Japan. Just a couple of years ago, they had a really bad earthquake and resultant tsunami which destroyed the entire power line and many cities were underwater. So let's say you were a very popular news website. Let's say Times of Japan and you were on physical infrastructure and tsunami comes. This is when people are looking at you to provide them information. This is when they need your website and your infrastructure is underwater, literally. Let's say you have a competitor called the Japan Express. Now the Japan Express is on AWS. So even if AWS's Japan infrastructure was shut down, they can quickly with a few modifications move their websites from Japan to Singapore and they are still up. In spite of the raging tsunami, their website is still up and giving information to people. Can you imagine the impact that will be made on their clients? Your competitors' users are coming to your website for information. You cannot pay money for this kind of PR. Now you may say that tsunami happens once in a lifetime. Things like this happen all the time. Natural disasters are likely, could even happen today. The idea is you need to be ready. An unfortunate incident could wipe out all your data. 
But if you have a copy in Singapore or US, you can still host your application from those regions. Now the advantage is that infrastructure in different regions for cloud providers look exactly the same. Many companies will have servers in different regions, but different hardware providers would set up their infrastructure and the IT infrastructure might look different for different locations. But cloud providers have the same infrastructure from user's perspective at all locations, with the UI and API being same for all regions, making migration from one region to the another fairly simple. In this video, we talked about companies like Netflix, Zynga, and Animoto who have scale using the cloud, and companies like Cool and Friendster who fail to scale. We also took a look at how cloud can provide instant scalability and redundancy as an advantage. In the next video, we'll take a look at cloud segments.